the end of truth and the great falling away. Pontius Pilate famously asked Jesus, what is truth? And now at the end of the age, no question is more relevant to you and to me. Paul tells us in a passage about the great falling away that only those who love the truth will be saved. Not just those who know the truth, those who love it. So what kind of truth do we need to know and love? Political truth, media truth, or spiritual truth? Certainly, we're seeing all of these things attacked today. But is this what Paul was speaking of? Today, we're going to explore this question, and since Paul links it with salvation itself, that it is a sign of salvation, what could be more important? What truth do we need to love? Let's start by looking at the word truth in the Bible. In 2 Thessalonians 2, the passage we just mentioned by Paul, it is aletheia in the Greek. According to Strong's Concordance, this is truth that is greater than just spoken truth, but rather is what is reality. It is reality itself, not illusion or constructed lying stories. It also means the truth is revealed in the Bible from God to man. It's that kind of truth. So now we know, let's look at the passage Paul spoke of. The first 13 verses of 2 Thessalonians 2 are about this issue. It begins, now brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. And you guys know what that is, right? That's the rapture. It's our gathering to Jesus. Let no one deceive you. See, truth is already under attack by any means. So people are going to try to deceive us on this very thing, that that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3. There is going to be a great apostasy, a great falling away from those who think they have faith prior to the return of Jesus in a rapture, but really don't. People who are playing church, who have given lip service to believing in Jesus, but really don't believe in him at all. Now, they're the ones who are going to be deceived and walk away or fall away from any semblance of this belief. What will that look like and what's going to cause this? This is what we're talking about today. In verses 9 through 10, Paul describes that falling away. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. So Satan's in charge of that. With all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 10. This is the great falling away in a nutshell. Two things happen. The lawless one is going to show power, signs, and wonders to deceive those with weak faith. They're going to trust what they see with their eyes and not what the aletheia truth found in the Bible is. And something known as unrighteous deception is going to happen as well. This word translated deception is apate. And apate leads to an apostasia. <laughs> if you're reading in the Greek, it means a false impression or pretending to be something you're not. Uh, very interesting. We'll get to that in a little bit. The truth of things, the true reality will not be apparent. Those who see with eyes of faith are the only ones who will see through it and be saved. So before the rapture, and that's true no matter what rapture theory you prefer, as we saw, that day will not come until the great falling away. A great deception or falling away is going to happen fueled by a false reality, false signs and wonders, and an impersonation of some sort. This is key. Absolutely every Christian on earth needs to be prepared for a false reality that's coming. Let me say that again. Every Christian on earth needs to be prepared that a false reality is coming. But how do we do that? Well, let's answer Pilate's question to Jesus. What is truth? It will give us a clue. What prompted this question? Here was the interchange between Jesus and Pilate that preceded that question. Pilate therefore said to him, 
Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth, aletheia, or reality, the way things really are. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice, John 18, 37. So Jesus came into this world for the cause of being its king and to bear witness to reality, to truth. Jesus even said to his disciples that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, John 14, 6. So reality is defined by Jesus and the word of God, not by what we see or think sounds good. It is what is written. This is the great struggle of the end times. What is truth? The answer is Jesus is truth and the Bible is truth. If anything we see or are told conflicts with what the Bible says, it is a lie. So let's examine a couple things that I think will likely happen in the coming years and how we should react to them. Let's start uncovering the lies we think are coming. This ministry thinks that the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, and the World Health Organization are going to create a one-world governance system prior to the coming of the Antichrist. The Bible calls this system Mystery Babylon. If you listen to their literature and their spokespersons, guys like Yuval Noah Harari, the goal of what they call the Fourth Industrial Revolution is transhumanism. The combining of man, computer, and machine, and specifically that the end result of this will be eternal life created through science, eternal life apart from God. They say these things, that these evil men and women will try to force this, quote, evolution, so to speak, on humanity. This fits the type of thing spoken of in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 10, something that Paul calls the lie, the greatest lie in history. It would be power and a lying sign to see people apparently, for a while at least, achieving eternal life. It would be pretending something will do something that it will not be able to do. It will be an unrighteous deception according to the Greek definition. So what does the Bible say about these transhuman things? Imagine how enticing it would be for humans to think that they could have eternal life through science. And this would seemingly not require faith as true salvation does. It wouldn't require putting your faith in something else. You could just take the shot or whatever it would be. Right before people's eyes, our media will be presenting stories about how this new genetic upgrade will allow people to have enormously extended lifespans. The media will show people on death's door, fixed, so to speak, by the upgrade and living and having a normal life, maybe even getting youth back. But in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, God's word tells us we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus, not science. And this is eternal life that they may know the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. John 17, 3. It cannot be a work of science. It is only a spiritual work. So hoping to achieve it through changing our genetics or any other scientific advance is blasphemous. It is not loving the truth. And in Genesis, we are made in the image of God. If we change our genetic makeup significantly, we are no longer human, are we? No longer in the image of God. Again, to knowingly do this is blasphemy. Will there be a temptation to take the world's answer? Of course there will be. Death is man's greatest fear, and a solution that you see right in front of our fleshly eyes will seem so enticing. What if you resist the temptation now? Will there be a price to pay for not going along with the world system in this regard? You know it. Of course there will be. Eventually, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, the system will kill everyone who doesn't worship the image of the beast. 
who doesn't take this upgrade. Okay, let's look at another possible lie in the end times. We know that Satan and his fallen angels will fight a battle with Michael and the good angels and that Satan will lose. After losing, he and his angels will be cast to the earth. Immediately after that, Satan then pursues the woman for time, times, and half a time. We learn this in Revelation 12, 7 through 13. Time, times, and half a time is obviously an end time thing. This isn't something that happened back in prehistory before the Garden of Eden. Satan is going to fall in the end times right around the midpoint of a 70th week. Satan has access to the earth now, but then at that time, He will be on the earth. Will he and his angels be visible here? We don't know. The Bible doesn't exactly tell us, but his access to earth is obviously different than it is right now. So being visible and tangible is entirely possible, if not likely. Have you thought about that? What form will Satan and his angels take if they are visible? If they are visible to humanity, will they look like humans? Or might they look like aliens and claim to be from another place, outer space or another dimension? Because frankly, that is somewhat true. They are heavenly beings and our society is being set up for an alien encounter. (laughs) If you don't see that by watching the news or social media, you're not paying attention. So who is doing this setup? if not Satan right now, knowing that he will soon be cast down here. And even what they say to us humans is being set up. What these aliens or so-called aliens are going to say. We probably already know the lies that they will tell us if they come in that form because the media and social media are spouting these lies already. One lie is that they are the ones who created life on this planet not God. In this previous video, we discussed what Richard Dawkins expects to hear from so-called aliens if and when they come to earth. And all the Anunnaki videos that are out there on YouTube tell us the same thing. Aliens created life, not God. So imagine how convincing this would be. Advanced beings land on earth, with the ability to do all sorts of signs and wonders. They also might tell us that they created life here and that God isn't real. Jesus isn't real. Hard to resist what you see right in front of your eyes, correct? And imagine all the lies that they would tell us about what is righteous and what is good and what we shouldn't be doing, which of course will be all the things that are in the Bible that God prescribes for us to do. If this is the devil, imagine him telling us what what is righteous. It will be the opposite of what is really righteous. LGBTQ, abortion, etc., etc. Who will it be offering the genetic upgrade so that we can be made into their image? Of course, it is this impersonation, these so-called aliens. This fits perfectly with the words unrighteous deception or impersonation that Paul was talking about in 2 Thessalonians. And who might it be that's going to pick out who will be the Antichrist? (laughs) Again, other than those with the strongest faith, who would resist what they're told by an advanced being? And what would happen to those who resist? Satan, in the guise of an alien, will say, eliminate them. Get rid of everyone who doesn't accept everything that he says is right and everything he says to do. And of course, his human leader that he's picked doesn't obey him. He might even say this human leader was the historic Jesus. I mean, it's possible. All sorts of crazy lies are possible in this deception. Can you see how such a deception would work? This would be the great tribulation. And in Matthew 24, 24, Jesus told us that this deception will be so great that it would deceive everyone, even the elect, if that were possible. So why isn't it possible? Because the elect have the Holy Spirit. 
and being aware in advance that anything that conflicts with the Bible is a lie is a great protection that the elect can use if they know it. Being ready for all types of lies. Are those in the pews in your church ready? Very, very few churches are ready for these things. Who is talking about this sort of thing in church? But we should be. Now, these may not be the exact lies that are used. I could be wrong about that. But we need to know that outlandish lies are coming and are going to cause a great falling away. Now, in the parable of the ten virgins, Jesus tells us half of those waiting for his return will fall away. What happens to their relationship to us, the ones who fall away? How will they treat us after they fall away? They're going to betray us, according to Jesus. Click right here to keep watching the details about what to expect when those we call our brothers and sisters in Christ turn on us and turn us in for being Christians. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.